Hi folks, it's Mark here from Notboard Gaming and do we have a very, very, very special video for you today. We have a true Clash of Titans in a head-to-head, -head, a designer head-to-head -head for Andromeda's Edge. We've got Luke and let's Laurie. Not, let's not forget family head-to-head. -head. There's clearly and some important... I, I was getting there. I was getting there. I'm so excited about this. We have Luke Laurie, designer, or one of the designers of Andromeda's Edge, and his son Maximus Laurie. Also, one of the designers of, Man uh, of Andromeda's Hedge going head to head in a 1v1 match just to show you guys exactly what happens. It doesn't get much better than this. And joining me today, as you've already heard, is Will Brown from Hungry Gamer. Hi, Will. Hey, good to, good to see you again, Mark. Thank you for joining me from the future. It's very, very exciting. And, you know, but before we jump in here, we need to, to, the tail of the tape here. Right? If we start here with Luke Laurie. I mean, first, the, yeah. the age difference between these two is incredible. I mean, Luke is coming in at a venerable old, while yep. Yep. Maximus, I'm not quite sure, but I, I believe he's coming in at what, what most people would say is, is young. young. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, I think, you know, we've got a, a classic tale here, haven't we? We've got the kind of long-in-the-tooth, dog-eared, experienced kind of person against a young, upcoming book, the new name on the marquee. And quite frankly, I don't know which way this is going to go. I mean, a lot of people are saying that Luke is over his prime, and maybe this is going to be sealing his fate here. Maybe we will have, I don't know, a new champion of Andromeda's Hedge. It's going to be very, very close call, I think. Yeah, and, you know, let's look at some of the strengths and weaknesses. I mean, for, for Luke Laurie, the big strength that we have coming in here is he has hands like small dogs. I mean, just <laughs> really, really <laughs> impressive stuff. While, on the other hand, Maximus, he has yeah. that youthful energy and inability to see anything bad ever actually happening to him. Absolutely. He's got the confidence there. He doesn't know, you know, what life holds for him. And you know, I hope it's all very, very good. Whereas Luke, is, is, of course, as we all know, and as you can see, when we uh, when you see Luke, you know, he's been kind of around the block quite a few times now. And as you say, those chihuahua paws, they're, uh, they can get in the way. They can make some really bad decisions. Oh, that's a good point. Sometimes they grab on, they don't let go to, to a decision, an idea. That's a really good point. And let's not forget, now that we're on to those weaknesses, you know, when you get to be our age, you got to get up and take breaks a lot more. And what is that going to do to Luke's flow? Well, exactly. Well, he's got to take breaks so he can obviously have his flow. Um, uh, because, of course, his bladder won't hold as much as Maximus as will these days as well. Because Maximus has that youthful vigorance. So it's going to be a really interesting matchup. But I do think that Luke has one ace up his sleeve. And that is the patented Luke Laurie smile. Mm, a little bit like... Smile. Yeah, you know, it's Luke Laurie's smile could mean many things. It could mean he has a plan. It could mean he's got a dastardly thing to do right now. He could mean that he's seen what your plan is. It could mean that he's passing gas. We don't know, but the patent of Luke Laurie's smile is always kind of uh, hard for people to take. And well, and the thing that we don't know is we don't know if Maximus also has that smile. It, it could be a genetic thing. We just don't know. And that's what we're going to have to go to the table and just find out exactly what's going on. So I know Cardboard Alchemy, they, they, they'd like to introduce the game a little bit. So let, let's, let's take it down and let's see what Peter Vaughn has to say here. Hello, welcome. Thank you for co joining us at Andromeda's Edge. I'm here with Luke Laurie and Maximus Laurie. I'm Peter Vaughn from Cardboard Alchemy, and we are presenting this game to you. We've got an exciting battle. These two designers are going head to head to show us who's the best in, at the edge. Um, we're excited that you're here uh, to look at the campaign. Uh, this will give you that insight to the gameplay. In addition to that, we've got another uh, a couple content creators. We're hoping we'll talk about these two players and actually tell you how they should have played, which will be fun as well. But these two know the game really well. Um, so these two players know the game really well, apparently. You that, would hope that, so. You know, that, that, that's good to know because it's definitely possible that we do not know the game very well. <laughs> I'm just... Oh. Play the Dark Star no. Acolytes. The Dark oh, Star Acolytes. Here we go. I don't think I've played Andromeda's Edge on camera before, so I'm probably... Uh, and it's uh, Luke's first time playing it on camera. 
And that's interesting because we know the youth are always on their tick, their tickety tocks and stuff. Exactly the YouTube's. That's well, if this is YouTube's. Yeah, it's all the same. You know, if he, he's used to being on the tickety tocks, what's the difference being on YouTube? So this is interesting. The Dark Star acolytes have the ability to use a ghostly presence to activate one of the alliance bases. Ooh, on his return uh, when he pulls his ships back. So that's really, really good. That is powerful, but I'm going to focus more in right now on Maximus. Look, look at the the intensity on that face. Yeah. He is thinking, I'm destroying you, Dad. Yeah. This is where I become the man of the house. Two energy, uh, which can contribute to my dice or can be used for other purposes. And nice. then... <clears throat> I can also discard my diplomacy cards because I'm not very diplomatic. Oh, discard diplomacy oh, cards because not diplomatic. Shots are oh. fired. He just said he is not going to be diplomatic today. And there is the Luke Laurie patented smile. Smile, like, yeah. See, we he's don't know, it. but he's not worried. <laughs> he's worried. He's been, he's been playing and designing games since before Maximus was born. Someone <laughs> well, could fact yeah. check me on that, but I think that's a thing. <laughs> So here we go. We have the two masters of Sounds work. good. I think my uh, Dark Star Acolytes are going to be taking down your Zodian Warmonger. So. Oh, a little gentle trash talk from, from the uh, the maestro. Turn order. Right. So we're going to roll off to determine initiative right now. And oh, look, like look, running... look at those small dogs. Look at those small dogs. Those <laughs> are terriers. A <laughs> little bit like uh, Dwellings of Elvedale, the combat system. Obviously, you roll the number of dice, and if you get more sixes and fives and fours than your opponents, then you're going to win there. And there we go. And we can see that Maximus is going to go first. Oh, Luke Laurie jumping out to the early lead with two victory points. Yeah, yeah, two victory points. But early game, you know, it's always difficult to say which way it's going to go, obviously. And uh, sometimes it's better to take that first turn rather than get an extra victory point. Collect that moon. What? That was the only place on the board that had two resources on a moon. Oh, that was a, a fantastic opening move by Maximus there. Yeah, and you notice, you notice that already, already Luke is on his heels as Maximus takes the only two resource moon on the board. That's fantastic. And that's a good thing to have early game. And some of them involve me diving in and grabbing some modules right away. And that's what I'm going to go for. So I'm going to drop into the Maximus Field. I wonder why it's called the Maximus Field. It's a good name. Oh, look at that. He's jumping into the Maximus Field. Luke is trying see what I see here is, is Luke is trying to get into Maximus's head right away by taking his namesake his field. Name. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's going to play into the young book's kind of thinking moving forward. Do I disrespect my dad by beating him hands down? That's true. Now, also, I'm curious if, if Luke's going to wind up getting in his own head, because there is no Luke field out there. There is no Luke field. No, no, there is an Odessa field, which is uh, another one of, uh, uh, of, of Luke's family, but I don't think there's a Luke field. And so what really, I mean, at some point, that has to start weighing on him. Does he have the stamina to keep this up the entire game? And I don't think so. There's only one Maximus field, and he's already blown that chance early, early on. Is this a sign of things to come? It, does Luke have the capacity, the stamina, and the youth to keep going, or will he need a nap in about 15 minutes? Sky crane. All right. So I'm getting the Sky Crane. And the damn con So he's starting out early getting two different modules, which, as we know, is going to launch him up two of those different tracks right away. Oh, and look at that right there. Maximus is helping his dad, setting the board back up. See, that? that is the sportsmanship that we like to see here. Well, uh, you say sportsmanship. I think, again, it's a little bit of mind games. What he's doing here is proving to his dad that he can do this, and Luke, in his age, can't. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, so and that's true. He did, he did do that with, uh, with nary a smile on his face. So that, the, the, you might be onto something here. Yeah. So, yeah, getting modules is obviously one of the good ways of, uh, of kind of uh, increasing your tableau, as it were, and also getting towards end of game points. But we look at those tracks in the middle of the board, and sometimes with Andromeda's Edge, we played it a few times, you and I will now, we know that going for those tracks can be really powerful if you're moving... Oh, we have a moment here. We have a tactics card coming. He's discarding his tactics card. He's using his power. He's using his power. That's right. Oh, yeah. jumping and in. And two. So he's oh, he look at that. Luke, Luke is on his heels. Luke's on, oh, there, yeah. there he is. He's smiling. He's trying to look confident. I don't think he is. Launch turn. 
think I'm going to play to my faction and launch to the Maximus. Oh, oh sorry, right sorry. away. He came right at him. He said, get out of my Maximus field. That is yeah. what the youth have that we just don't anymore. All right, let's see how this plays out. Interestingly, we'll look at the event track. We're almost up to the very, very first event as well, which, you know, that they can be kind of powerful. They will bring new, new aliens back out on the board as well. And, you know, that is one of the exciting things about playing two players. Those events come very, very quick. Absolutely. Add those to my tableau. Bump up my tracks. Um, I get an upgrade. And you'll know, and they claim the exact same two tracks. So they, they are keeping pace with each other. And I think we have our fight coming. A uh, fighter, which then gives oh, me Oh, he's upgraded fighter. his fighter already. Uh, ship. Which is going to give him a free fighter, too. I choose to escalate. This is very exciting. Early game. If the, can they both keep this pace up for the entirety of the game? You're escalating and moving your ship in. Um, I don't know if I can. I don't have any ships to escalate. Ooh, see? Luke's on his and heels. And now we uh, pass it to my diplomacy. Uh, there's no escalation. Diplomacy. So he's not going to do that. No, he's not. No. 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 Maximus uh -oh. would be silly to play diplomacy cards because he can use those cards as part of his ability for the Zodian Warmongers to actually gain tactics cards. Well, you'll notice here, Luke May has showed him some of his wisdom and age if he just got to go up the supremacy track because he was outnumbered in this fight. So even if he loses, he's still winning a little bit. That is a veteran move right there. And what's slightly worrying here is Maximus already in the early game seems to have a game plan and Luke just seems to be moving around the board a little bit and a little bit scattergun in his approach and that's never a good never ever a good approach for a game like andromeda's edge throw in one energy so i can divert energy to weapons so i spend oh, one energy to give they're me they're, they're, they're going all out on this fight uh, I, gotta, I gotta say i feel okay. i feel like maximus is on his heels here let's see what? if he can come it out he's gonna really need to bring it with this dice roll here uh, here like you are all right here it is depth of space six two Six five four. Uh, six five beat six two. All right. Um, results of battle. My ship is damaged and goes to the scrapyard. Okay. You gain your tactical ops. My tactical operations means that I'm going to draw a tactics card. And you can see that Luke's ship's gone into the scrapyard. Was it Luke's ship? No, it was yeah. Up. Oh, and here we have that first event. Maximus yeah, just go. triggered it so with that soon. win. End of your turn, and we also need to bring out a new region. At this time, region. I bring out the new region. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to bring a new piece out onto the board, they're going to bring new bad guys out onto the board, and they're also going to trigger maybe some scoring mechanisms and some, uh, some abilities as well. Now, what's interesting here is no, neither of them have any idea what event is coming, because no one has gone into the nebula there. Oh, no. Here we go. Welcome to the fleet. Um, okay, so we score industry minus damaged modules, and so we look at our positions on the industry track. Well, if we look at the industry track, we can see that uh, Maximus is in the lead there in the pink, and Luke is just behind him. So Maximus is currently on seven, and Luke is on six. I don't think either of them got any damaged modules as of yet, so as, uh, Maximus has already gained back that one point disadvantage that he got at the beginning. Uh, and are some new raiders. Here we go. So we've got Taipei, and this one is the Corrigan Smugglers. Vorticon Strikers. So now we have Vorticon Strikers and the Corrigan Smugglers. Um, it begins in the Trade Hub, and these are the Corrigan Smugglers. Ah, the Smugglers start out in the Trade Hub, kind of out on the board, and they also already have those, that's those swarming raiders that are just, just the worst, really. Yeah. But you can see at the nebula up at the top there, and you you need to, uh, you, you can't, in most cases, you can't jump straight into the nebula. Um, which ship is it, Will? Can you remember which ship it is that you need to go into the nebula? Or it needs to no, be? that's your science vessel. Science vessel, yes. Yeah. Okay, and now it's your turn. Oh, we missed the oh, special, special effect. effect. Each player may build one ship of their choice at no cost or gain two titanium. Each player may build one ship of their choice at no cost now, it's going to be really interesting to see what Maximus does here, because he already, I believe, got a, f a free fighter. He's taking two titanium, and he's building his resource pile up there, you see. And, and I think, again, already, it's showing that, you know, 
Yeah, it's, it's still early to say, but I think Maximus' oh. game plan here is a little bit better. Luke has just gone with the the heavy cruiser. Now, well, we, we don't know if he's got a good upgrade on that yet coming, but that he's in for the fight now. He really is in for the fight. Yeah, You know, Maximus came and, and smacked him in the mouth, and... Luke's, Luke's, Luke's been smacked in the mouth in his day, so he's not phased. Indeed, indeed. But he's got, you know, I think, you know, Maximus is, is kind of upping the stake in the resources management game. I, you know, I, I, it, it's, it's way early to say, but I, I'm liking the, the style and the progress that Maximus is making. Luke, for me at this stage, not quite focused enough on one strategy. Oh, look, interesting. He, he's, he's, He's going to this planet because he said it looks like Dune. Now, to Dune. me, that that is that is a player that is losing their focus. Yeah, or or, or, or kind of you know old age just creeping in, and they can't remember the name of the game, of the planets on the game that they invented. Who knows? That's you know that that is also true. And let's oh, I tell you, oh. Maximus is just fighting everybody. So he's pulled the, uh, the the striker out of the nebula because he's gone to an adjacent space. Oh my gosh, and look, he's put everything in there. So Luke, could Luke escalate? I don't know if Luke's got the movement points with his ship to escalate, so maybe he's going to stay out of this fight. It's too far away. The um... Well, no, now, if you remember, I, uh, most of the cruisers have the jump ability, so he could do it, but he's, it looks like he's not going to. So he's leaving this, this fight up to Maximus, who's pulled all his, uh, all his ships into, these, uh, into this, um, uh, this battle. Let's see what happens here. So Luke will roll for... Uh, ah, Luke, Luke's explaining targeting right now. That gives you a bonus on targeting, so you get three plus two. So I have four dice, and they're all going to be five or, or higher. That's so cheating. Wow, look at that. Four dice, all of them are five or higher because of the abilities that he has. Don't always feel sorry for the Raiders, but in this circumstance... I rolled a six. The six already beats it. Oh, look. See, and you, and you can see the impatience suddenly as, as Luke starts to sweat. You know, Maximus is just trying to roll out those dice and see just how badly he destroys that striker. A very youthful move. And Luke's like, you've already won. No, you see, you can't, you can't rush future greatness here. No, exactly right. Maximus is calm. He's steady. He's controlled in this. Luke already, even when he's rolling for the bad guys, he still can't make a decent move. Um, also, as a free action, I'm going to discard a... Oh, as a free action, he's going to discard yet another... Oh, he's another doing diplomacy it again. Card. So he's really using the Zodian Warmonger's ability here. Discard a diplomacy card. Get two tactic cards. Those tactic cards can be so important for your game. And, you know, it just, it really might be a message to Dad. There's no diplomacy here today, Dad. No. It is time that we settle this. If this is this is Maximus saying, remember when you grounded me in 2017? This, mm. I told you you'd get payback for it. This is the day, Dad. I'm going to embarrass you on camera. And I tell you, you know, if he if he keeps going as he is, there there might be payback for the things that happened in 2012 as well. This is true. This is true. Ah, uh, he's he's playing like he's not sure where he's going to go. Okay. There he is. Yeah, there we go. He's made it. Look, decision. he's he is he's daring Luke to come in there. Okay, you coming over to those planets kind of messes with my plans a little bit. Luke's already saying that Maximus is messing up his plans a little bit, and that's actually Luke overstretching the mark because he obviously doesn't have any plans whatsoever other than wondering what he's going to get for lunch. Transports have a range of one, so if I went and engaged that trans... I believe it was soup. It, 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 at his age, you know, the teeth have to come out. There's very little he can do. Soup and maybe mashed potato. Yeah. Uh. I just feel like there's no safe move for me right now with warmongers. And he's he's feeling a little bit pressured. He doesn't think there's a safe move. Now, the safe move is really just to throw the towel in right now, Luke. But no, you soldier on. Never, never, never let the fact that you're going to lose this terribly get in the way of you continuing to play the game. Well, let, let's not forget. Let's not forget. There could be some gamesmanship here. You know, there there is. Look at look at if you see. Look at Luke's posture. There's a real confidence there. There is. Yeah. I don't have any ships in my launch base, so I'm going to return to station. Oh, nice. I'm going to leave transports on the planets where I am. Leave Andromeda. Leave us. So I'm going to pull back the death cloud. Oh, uh, we have our first and pullback. And activate my primary reactor. 
So this is pretty much if you play the Dwellings of El- Elderdale, uh, Eldervale, you'll understand what's happening here. As you pull your ships back, you then get to activate part of your tableau, which can be really, really powerful in terms of generating new resources, helping you build buildings, etc., converting stuff. Really, really, really powerful. Oh, look at that move right there. That is a masterstroke of a move. He's... Oh, wait, wait, he's pulling back. So no, he, he repaired that oh. damage module. And... Oh, he's, he's going back to discarding a diplomacy card to draw two more tactics cards. This can extend his turn or give him more options for future turns. So I'll take a repair, and then I'll pull back and take a credit. Oh, I'm surprised he's not going to activate that second industry there to get those two ice. Maybe, you know, he's okay. He's okay at the moment. I can. I think the one thing he's lacking at the moment is well, he's, he's now gone through his resources, uh, a lot of his resources. Certainly, credits. Credits would be really useful for any player. Uh, credits are wild. Oh, um, that's oh. what he was doing. He was he's getting built. the credit so he could build that. And with all those leaders around, that's going to be big points. Let, let, let's listen in and points. see how many points it comes to be. Hard. So the instructions on the observatory card. I first gain a science track boost. I'm pink. So we move that there. That bumps the event track up one step. Slow down. Did you pay to build this thing? I spent a credit and a carbon in the form of a moon, which is now, where I started the moon. The discard. smugglers are out here and they have discount goods for building developments. Did you That's a great point. So I think I'm gonna hold on to that credit. Well, you look at that. See that ah. is fatherly care right there. He just told him that he was missing a discount. That's okay, but that's good. That's that's you know, that's honesty. And I think, you know, generationally, uh, Luke is obviously over the generation, um, where honesty is important. And I think he needs to be honest with himself at the moment that he's not performing greatly. Ooh. But look at this. Oh, he's racking seven points from the uh, adjacent leaders to where he built the observatory. That's really, 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 really good for an opening, for, for an early game move. But again, but is is Maximus... Oh, he's got a free, he got a free action. No. Oh, wow. Oh, this is. It allows him to get a free discovery token, but he gets to keep the card because it scores at the end of the game. He's already putting stuff in his back pocket. Clever, you seem to have all the cool moves. Yeah. So I mean, that this now the question though is, I mean, this is his fourth placement, so he is building really early and is he going to be able to maintain the momentum he needs to score those observatories to the max if you see what i did there if you can <laughs> to the maximus i mean if he can it's what it's um uh, if you get right to the end of the track 10 points for each observatory maybe uh i mean that's that's pretty good scoring if he can continue to build observatories and get to the end of that track. oh he is luke just stealth moved in my transport onto that icy planet. You might be wondering why I would visit that icy planet. And the answer is because the Dark Star Acolytes can use their ghostly presence to take a free action at the beginning of their return to station. So what I'm going to do is, I have no ships in my launch bay, I can use an unoccupied Alliance base and perform its action as if I played a ship there and then regroup. And so we pretend like my ghostly ship is over here in the development office, scooping up my leader and using the develop action to build a city right there. And he's building a city. That, you know, we, we, we've been yeah. down on Luke's strategy here and it no, seems nice like he, he pulled us into his trap, possibly along with Maximus. I don't know that Maximus saw that coming. And again, you can see it on his face. That was not what he expected to happen. He's sitting back in his chair. He is definitely on his metaphorical heels now. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that was a really smart move. But do remember, Will, that a broken clock is also right twice a day. And As you well know. 
<laughs> so maybe maybe it was lucky, but no, that was a smart move from Luke. Uh, he's built that city there. It's a really, really nice move using the uh, Dark Acolyte special power. Track, which is civilization in this case. And then I'm going to score based on leaders here and adjacent, which looks like six leaders yep. there. I see. And look at that. He pulled in six points. And so six again, points. we are still very, very close. Very close. Oh, oh, we are tied again. Tied. Absolutely tied. 14 points to 14. Oh, this is going to be a close game in the game itself. He's thinking about using the city ability. The module. And because this is my return to station, it means I could use that module right away too. So I could use it oh, and because he's yeah, he's returning to station, he could get to use that module straight away. You see, you know, they say you can't teach old dogs new tricks, but sometimes when you have those those terrier hands, you just grab on and you just take it right away. And look at that. This look at true. that. Just like a small dog with a plushy toy, grab that module and boom, right there it goes. Look at that. The ice extractor next to the sky crane. Unbelievable. And I'm sure if the camera was on him right now, we would see the Luke Laurie smile right now. But here we have Cool Hand Luke in all his glory, showing why he's the come not the comeback kid, but why you should never fully discount him. And look at that. He's now upgraded his science vessel and gotten it for free. Nice. That's a really smart move. Science vessel allows him to go into the nebula. He can start exploiting that nebula with those really powerful moons that you get there. And I'm going to pull back first my... Okay, so here's the and, and, and that was the beginning of his pullback. He hasn't even started yeah. his turn for... For realsies, as the kids might say. As Maximus might say, for realsies. For realsies. Now he's going. Yeah, totes for reals. I many damaged modules, but I have a damaged ship over here. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's Autobots allowed to perform a free repair. Now, if you get a repair action um, and you can't repair anything because you have nothing damaged, you get victory points in lieu. Before I activate this, I'm going to be slotting this carbon moon right there, which gives me... He's using a carbon moon, which gives him another two VP. Two more victory points, which he's going to be able to make use of probably right now. And now he's playing on the sky crane. Oh, yeah. So he's going to get some free titanium. So where Maximum went strong on resources earlier, this is starting to work in Luke's favor now. And yet another victory point. The old dog is pulling ahead. Energy to continue activating my modules. I can use energy to activate the industry mod. And 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 I love and I love how right here he is so confident. He's just taking the time to break it down nice and slow for Maximus just how it is that he is going to take the lead. Look at that. And I'm going to but as we know in this game will taking the lead and getting to the finish point whether it's 50 points, 75 points, etc. It doesn't mean that you win the game. It's all about your engine that you built for that end of game scoring also. That's true, because I have led many a game for much of the game only to wind up in last place. In fact, I'm very comfortable in last place, so I'm familiar with that technique. Then look at look at that right there. Maximus is not even paying attention to Luke. He is looking at his cards. He's planning his next turn. He is thinking right now, okay, old man, let me show you how the kid's going to do it. How do I take you down? Oh, he says, I like them apples. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do, Luke. Yeah, but I think Maximus may have an orchard. Ah, look at that. Maximus is pretending he forgot to discard at the end of last turn. He didn't. He's just trying to get oh, into there Luke's goes. head. The faction power again. That's really good. Get rid of that uh, diplomacy card. Get another two tactics card. Powerful tactics card hand building up. Transport to the Maximus field, which checks up the event track. I'm going to buy two... Uh, industry modules. He's going for two industry modules here, so he's really pushing up that track. He needs three energy to do this. And one other resource. Uh, but you can use a card in lieu of resource, so that's what he's going to do. That's another ability, another great thing about having a strong or a good hand of tactics cards. I think he's still limited to five at the moment. As you move up uh, one of the tracks, then you can get access to six cards. That's right. I believe if you go up the, the blue track all the way on the right, yes, that's right. You go all the way up the blue yeah. track and you get more and more cards. But with the way he's used them, I don't know that he's going to be worried about that. And he's moved up the event marker. And then I get an upgrade. And he gets a free upgrade, another ship upgrade, which will also, as we know, give him yet another ship. 
and he's getting his science vessel. So just like Luke, he is not giving him any air, which makes sense because it's space. <laughs> you can almost sense the vacuum between these two. Oh, and look, look at that confidence as Maximus sits back. He he is sitting back like somebody that knows he just drew into a full house. Okay, so we're getting up to our very first event now. To the alternate dimensions over here. So I'm actually going to go into the nebula. I'm going to rescue my two leaders that are over there. Now, because he wants to know what that next event's going to be. Yeah. He wants to make sure it's not the industry track. And then I get an opportunity to look. In events, you will score on a random track, depending on what's on the card itself. Uh, so he gets to, using this action, he gets to look at two cards, put one on the top and one on the bottom, therefore determine the next event and plan it accordingly. On the top, and this one on the bottom. And if bottom. you look closely, you can almost see just the faintest sheen of sweat showing up on Maximus's brow there. And the question is, is Maximus going to go into that nebula immediately after to undo whatever it is that Luke did? Okay, so Luke's drawn the the uh, the, uh, the Corrigan smugglers. I am on the board, but I am too far away. Oh, yeah. But I think he's going to take it on his own. I don't think Maximus is going to escalate here and join the fight. Again, Maximus, despite being a warmonger, is not really going in for combat at this stage. He's just he's just too far away right now. He wasn't prepared yeah. for that move, and he yeah. didn't have them out on the field. And look, and you can see he's not happy with that. No, he wanted to be part of this fight. Oh, look at that Mi smile! Luke knows what he's doing. He he knows what he's doing. He's he's just letting Maximus sweat. Destroyed, but. I'm going to accept. There we go. Maximus is going to roll for the Corrigan Smuggler. And you see that? You see that is the 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 elder statesman move. He is just going to let himself die. Five three. I lose. Okay, my science vessel goes into the scrapyard, and he lost. He lost. There we go. So his science vessel made one trip to the nebula, and he's already in the scrapyard. Starship Enterprise. It is not. No. And there, and there it is. He's also going to the nebula. He wants those leaders, and he does not like whatever it is that Luke did. Take the move. And when you go for leaders this early in the game, does that mean that your tactic is going to be to build more buildings? We already mentioned earlier that he's probably going to try and get up on the observatory track. It's possible. Uh, and to do that, you need leaders to put in those buildings. So maybe he's going for a building-heavy strategy. I also get to look at the top two event cards. Uh, you're probably going to mess with my... It's possible. Here we go. So it's Maximus's turn now to look at the top two events. So this could now, where Luke originally had a, 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 an edge on potentially knowing what the next event was, now he doesn't know what the next event is. And it, it happened so quick, I wasn't quite sure. But I do think, I do think that he took the one that Luke had put on top and he threw it to the bottom. I could be wrong there, but I think that's what happened. I think so. It's repair moon pressure. Those repairs are so good. Oh, that is a good move. I don't know if you caught that, Mark, but Luke just took the repair moon. And if he can slot that in somewhere, that's going to be huge. Yeah, because throughout the day, the game, you are going to get damaged, um, uh, whether it's issued by the players or whether you pick a damage module. And those damages cost you points. He is doing a free jump and he just went from from the nebula all the way across the galaxy. There is no way that Luke saw that coming. There's just no, no way. Not at all. Not at all. And that's the power of those tactic cards. Here, but I'm not sure how long I want to hang on to them. You changed the event potentially right there, so I don't know if I want that to happen. Um, oh, he's sweating. I think time has come to jump the ship. I think that's because he's gone. And so I'm going to be jumping my heavy that. cruiser using its jump ability. Spending one energy, and I'm going to jump. So using the heavy cruiser to use its ability, and spending one energy, and he's going to jump all the way across the development office, and it will give him the ability to build. He's building another building. He is building yeah. another building. I did not see this coming early in the game. I'll take the one discount. Because let's not forget, when you're facing the warmongers, having these buildings all over the board is really good for those bonus dice you get all the way around them. Oh, absolutely. Always, and it's, it's an obelisk the obelisk is, is relatively inexpensive to build as far as leaders go. My obelisk on my transport, 
and then I score up the... That's see, and look at those terrier hands. That just, look at that. No problem. Yeah. There we go. He's moving up the track. He's still not dominant on the track, so is he? No, no. He, he's, he's ignoring that track, which is a bold, bold strategy. So here we go. He triggered the event. A new tile comes out. He gets to place that wherever he wants to on the board. Uh, within okay. certain parameters, um, and his obelisk is going to score for all the leaders around it and adjacent. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight victory points for eight victory points. That's a, again a smart move for all those leaders. Maybe Maximus is just maybe having to think about how his game's going. Uh, he could right get now. four energy, but he's going to hold on to that energy till later. And end of my turn triggers the event. And what's it going to be? Events. And Tropic Reversal. Tropic Reversal? Scores the industry track. And, and it's the industry track. That, mm. see, and that is yeah. exactly what Luke did yeah. not want. And the credit to Maximus for not letting it show that he got exactly what he needed. Yeah, yeah. And Luke is getting seven points, and Maximus has nine points. Still puts Luke way out in front, but... You can see that by neglecting those tracks, it could seriously damage Luke's uh, future game. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, the Ion, Ion Storm. Storm. This is one of my least favorite Raiders to face in yeah. this game, and it is right there. Your region, it's going to damage every ship in that region. It's going to damage every ship in the region if it strikes. The uh, Raiders here, there's Raiders all over the place. And look at that. Notice how notice how Luke gets in Maximus' head again by saying that we have not done a good job of yeah. cleaning up these raiders. When really, Luke is the one that keeps bringing them out onto the board. What what a display of gamesmanship there! And I just don't know how Maximus is going to be able to recover from from this mental assault that Luke is laying on him. I you know it's it's tantamount to bullying if you like what he's doing right. Get one victory point. Okay, so entropic reversal has occurred, and now oh, this is this this is brilliant strategy right here. I mean, Ma Maximus is on his heels, and he's going to come out of this with win or loss. He's he has learned a lesson right there with that. Yeah, yeah, never trust my dad. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, resources. <laughs> I'm going to trade two tactics. Okay, he's going to trade uh, two tactics cards for two credits. Okay, that's good. And he's he's pulling the pulling the the smuggler, hoping for an easy win. So there's nobody around to escalate. Oh wait, wait, is Luke gonna jump? No, he's not gonna do. He's, he's gonna pass on escalation. So he's gonna stay where he is. He's gonna leave his son to fight the guys on his own. Right. Oh, there and right there, is, Luke admitting to he made a mistake. Had he used his obelisk ability, he would have had the energy to jump in right now. Yeah. Yeah. He knew what Maximus was going to do. He wanted to let his son suffer. That's what he did. It's more mind games from the master, Luke Laurie. I'm not going to spend any energy. Oh, he's not going to spend any energy. Is he just accepting a defeat here? And the Corrigan Smugglers rolling three. Six, four, three. I got six, three. Which means you lose. That, wait, wait, he's reaching for the cards. He's reaching oh, for the cards. He's got a tactics card. What? Perfect He's got perfect shot. shot. So what he gets six six three. Play. He had that so cool. Did you he didn't even flinch. He did not show any emotion there. He knew exactly what he was gonna do. He didn't need to spend energy. He knew he had the perfect shot card. He knew exactly when to play it. That was a beautiful, beautiful move from young Maximus. That reward is uh, advancing on the commerce track one space. And look at that. So he got to advance on two different tracks for that. And everyone, let, let's just point out that the smugglers are still out there. You have to hit the smugglers uh, twice before they go away. But, this makes me sad. But now I'm finished. I need... Uh... Look at those tracks. I mean, Maximus is leading on three of them. Luke on one, and then they're, they're, they're kind of neck and neck on another track. But those tracks... You cannot neglect them for the powers and the abilities they give you, but also that end of game scoring and also the ability for the event scoring as well. Yeah, and well, I mean, this is what we knew was going to happen. We knew that Maximus was going to jump out early, try to hit Luke hard and get him in a hole. And right now, he definitely had to look at that. Luke is itching for a fight. He does not like what Maximus is doing, and he wants to put him in his space place. 
So. Maximus is already checking on Google for the name of the nearest retirement home. What he's going to do here is he's going to send his dad off. Ooh, and, and you know, and, and, and with the potential success of this game, he just might have the funds to do it. <laughs> yes, this is true. And... Oh, Luke going to the tactics cards. I'm going to also... And he does nothing with them. Oh, uh, look at look at that. So Maximus is very confident, taking a sip of his water. He's not worried. Oh, but, but Luke's spending. Uh, he's going to go for uh, he's, his modules. You know, he's listening to us. He's listening to you, Mark. He's trying to go up those tracks, getting the cheapest modules out there. He realizes that he's got to get moving. The petrol fuel. And he's going for the petrol fuel transformer and the aluminium smelter. Um, Which, for oh, those of us uh, in America, aluminum. Aluminum. <laughs> so, uh, two modules allows him to move upon two tracks, or one track twice, depending if it's um, modules from and the same track. Great sportsmanship again by Maximus, refilling that for his dad. But his dad can't see that far across the table, that's the issue. Well, to be fair, I can barely see that far. me <laughs> a discovery token. So I get first pick of these precious tokens, and you don't oh, even know what's what in here. what a move. And that could be a mistake on young Maximus's part. He let Luke get first pick of these discovery tokens, and these tokens are not all created equal by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> uh, oh, Maximus is sweating again. He is, and that's the face of a worried young man. There we go. He's pranked his father's car, and he daren't tell his dad. And um, I'm going to move up the industry track there, which advances the event. And Luke's also moved up on the industry track. That event timer is getting perilously close to the end again. And the question is going to be, which one of them goes to Nebula to try to set the... Oh, a free commerce module. A free commerce module as well from his discovery token. This is unexpected. But is he going to take the cheap one? Oh, this one comes damaged. Yeah. The mercenary union's actually better for me. Again, another another veteran move. He knows the event's coming, and he did not take the damaged one. Oh, look at that. Just by slotting in a moon, he'll be able to get points. Two VP for that. That's nice. But he's got to, he's got to use a moon to, to do that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold off on slotting a moon on there. But I He's going to wait and hold off slotting a moon. Nice moves. Understand that. Um, now that I've completed my action... Oh yeah, move up the commerce track for my commerce module. See, you know, I I know we we we, we tease Luke on the on the, you know our old man memory, but I don't think that's memory. I think he's doing it on purpose. I think he's lulling Maximus into a more confident state, thinking that Dad's not all there, not focused on the game, and he has him. I think this is gamesmanship. Uh, it may well be. It may well be. Uh, I have. Doubts that that's 100% of the, uh, 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 of the truth, if you like. But, you know, that could be the case. I'll reserve my opinion. And here, what do you got left? You have no ships left? And then I'm going to move mine right here. Okay. Now. Uh, he's coming around from his morning slumber. It's soon be time for his 11 o'clock slumber. And his second breakfast. But, you know, he's this. we got... Almost 10 minutes now of kind of peak Luke lorry time before he starts to decline back into sleep. No, I, I, I was not aware that the lorry family were hobbits with second breakfast. That is, that is a, you know, you heard that here first, folks. <laughs> here we go. Oh, he's using a Maximus again. More, more tactics cards. And gives him two points. But if we look at the board, we still can't even see the pink marker on the scoreboard but th there we go he's he's using his his uh, his action again his ability to discard a diplomacy card get more tactics cards luke's barely been to the tactics deck and maximus is cycling through that thing faster than uh, lance uh, lance armstrong my primary reactor for three energy faster than lance armstrong gets caught cheating or just faster than lance armstrong in general F faster than lance armstrong on steroids Oh, too soon. <laughs> so he's going to pull back his Deathclaw Fighter and he's going to gain a repair or build. 
Down so he may have put himself in a tough situation by slowing oh, that no, move no. there. Oh, there we go. It's two points and a repair. Um, and if he's got nothing to repair, he gets an extra victory point. Action. You just moved your marker oh. two spaces. Well, that's what I wanted. I wanted two <laughs> points. Oh, look at that. There we what, go. Yeah. What a catch by Maximus. That was the old, oh, did I move my points, not yours? And just like that, it's closer. Okay, that's that module. Uh, I'm going to slot a moon. And again, maybe leading on the on the uh, on the scoreboard throughout the game uh, is not the best move to rush towards that fifty or, or whatever your end game is set at. Uh, getting there quicker does not mean that you've won the game. Oh, what? That's a good place, Moon. Look at that Moon. Or an energy onto the uh, both sides of the Moon, so I gain a credit and an energy. Uh, and look at that stack of credits that he has there as well. He's now credit rich. He's building to something big. What? Two, titanium. And those credits are really important. Um, he can only have five. Uh, his maximum credits is five. But he can trade them for ice. Oh, and another module. Look at that. And if you notice, what is that? Did you see what that module will get him if he activates it there, Mark? I didn't see it. No. Nope. Another tactics card. Another tactics card. Oh, so he needs to move up on the track, which increases his hand size now. Yep, definitely now is the time, and he is all the way at the bottom again. That could have been a mistake. Two. Uh, two energy for a transport. Oh, look at the way Luke has those cards and the way he's examined what Maximus is doing. He has a plan. Do you know they're actually you know tarot sized cards? It's just kind of Luke's Doberman hands that make them look really small. That is true. That is true. You know, I've heard it's possible that they are actually the size of a uh, regular piece of printer paper. Okay, right, like an A4 size, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They did the, the A4 size, and just you know, with, with with hands that powerful, it is amazing sometimes that he just doesn't. It's amazing he hasn't already won the game. Oh, look at look at that! Look at that! There we go. He's, has he built another building now? Just now, Maximus. Has he built another observatory? I'm curious if you're going to. take Yes, he has. Oh, and there we go. Look, look at the camera work by Peter Vaughn here. What a great shot we have. Ooh, what's he going to take? It, it seems like he has to want those the points and tactics cards. I'd say more points and tactics. No, he's taking the credits. He's take. Is he? he yeah, he's did. taking he the, went credits. For the credits. He's gone for the credits, but he can only hold five, so he's holding that back. Now, he's not going to flip that yet. He's going to hold that back until he needs more credits once he's got that, and then that's absolutely great. He's got the ability there to use those credits. Oh, and look, and, and another one. What's he going to... Oh. Oh, two tactics. Was that two tactics cards? I think it was. I think it was two tactics. And you know, I'm a little surprised on the first one. He didn't take the checking of the events. Yeah. Because they are very close to the next next event. I'm looking at our track positions. Those, but again, like that, that, kind of that is just the confidence of youth. We don't know that he is thinking far enough ahead. Oh, and look, the, look, that is a full-on smile, a chuckle from Luke. Luke knows he made a mistake there. Yeah, yeah. And look, look how excited Luke was to reach out to grab that. He's excited about something. Well, uh, maybe he just wants to be part of the game now because Maximus is starting to really get into his stride now. And again, Maximus apparently listened to you. If you notice, he went up. He went up the blue track, getting closer to those card. And he's moved at the science track as well. And that science track, as he continues to build observatories, is going to be really, really important for the final scoring of those observatories as well. I thought I was like all winning there for a minute, and now I just watched. Ah, uh, don't don't believe that, Maximus. Luke is just talking. Um, tableau management. Yeah, he's he's trying to lull you into a false sense of security. It's more sledging from Luke there. You know, th this is a moment, it's like when you're playing a game with a little kid, and you, you know, you want to let them win, but what Luke's doing here is he's letting him think he wins, and he's going to come in at the very end, yeah. he's going to block that last shot and say, you're old enough for me to crush you. That's what's coming. Yeah, exactly right. I'm going to take your iPad off you at bedtime. That's what Luke's waiting for right now. Pick up the event. It's deja vu. You remembered me playing a card, but it was the other card. It's Okay, Deja Vu lets me shuffle the tactics cards that are in the discard pile and draw two of them. So I'm hoping some of these good moves we've already done will come back. Oh. This is in the discard pile. That's the one I'm going to draw. 
Oh, and so he's pulling a dis a card right out of the discard, a tactics card. Look at that, that kind of Vegas shuffle he's doing there, the riffle shuffle. Um, we've got to watch him very carefully, look for him pulling a card from the bottom of the table. I'm not too sure, maybe out of his sleeve, who knows. These are going to get shuffled back in. You want to do that? Yeah. All right, and now the them. only card in the discard pile. And see, so, you know, he, he's, he's passing those over because he's the thing. Those, those poodle hands, he's passing those over to his son. Says, you know what, son, you, yeah. you take care of this. Oh, look at look at those choices. And I have to say, I really like the new the new art on those cards. They look really They're nice from when I had yeah. the My prototype. To return to station. Um, I have no ships in my station, in my launch bays, and that means that I get a free action to use an unoccupied alliance base. Oh, and he's using that Dark Star Acolyte ability. He's trying to figure out how to use that again. Yeah. So yeah, again, he's just a little bit... Put himself in the resources. corner. He doesn't have the yeah. resources. He's not like yeah. Maximus, who has all of those credits, and this could have been an oversight on Luke's, has, on Luke's part. Yeah. It feels like Maximus is playing chess and, and Luke is struggling to play tic-tac-toe at the moment. The, uh, the amount of forward vision that Maximus has got. Ghostly presence to have my ghostly ship go to the Odessa field. That will be triggering the event. And that oh, he's good look, but he's, he's, he's pulling. Look at that. We have the event. Let's see what it's going to be because this is going to tell us Really, this could tell us what's going to happen for the rest of this game if Luke or Maximus gets lucky enough with this random pull because no one knows what's going to be on this track or what's going to be on this event card. And I'm going to spend an energy as an additional resource. And I'm going to acquire the Machinist's Guild. And he is going up that track more. And that is going yeah. well the event's already been triggered so we can't go up more cards because i can't afford any and so i'm going to be burning one of these this legion of heroes will go away wow and look at that just disrespect of the past down. just burning the legion of heroes right to the ground that is a disrespectful move and that was my ghostly presence and my all refreshed and his ghostly presence and that is so he hasn't even done anything yet that was just his ability that gave him all of that it wasn't still the greatest way he could have used that, though. A little bit more planning with the resources. He could have got more out of that move. It was a bit kind of 70% there. I'd like to have seen more from Luke in this instance. So, let's see. He's pulling back, and he's going to take three energy. Okay, that's not a bad move. It's a safe move. It's not exactly a thrilling move. We've been getting a lot of victory points from repairs in this game because we've been over-repairing. Um, then... I get a, so I got three energy and a repair, and I have nothing. Three energy and a repair is nothing damage, which means he gets a victory point for that. Yep. And that, okay. that, that, that rule is a newer, a relatively newer rule that, that really, I think, makes, makes the game interesting. Uh, you can just start farming those points just by having repairs. Sure. And I think what it does is it just shows that the game doesn't really have any wasted moves. Uh, you, you, you have non-optimal moves. But what you don't have is any waste of moves, and I think that's a really, uh, really interesting dynamic to throw in there. Yet another unneeded repair. Some games are just everything's damaged. Not in this game. Not today. All right. Yeah, there's not when much I go damage here, going I get an on ice today. And a carbon. So he's building up some resources. Hopefully, the next time he uses Dark Acolyte's ability, he has the resources to then optimize and maximize his moves. And, uh, and not leave it just a little bit lackluster like his last uh, use of the ability. And, you know, more, more, more repairs, more things, though. And it's interesting to me, I don't think he has used his his ability that he, that would get him four free energy from his building earlier. No. Maybe he's forgotten about it. So I don't have another moon to slot there. So that is it. These energies are discarded. My ships come back to their launch bays, ready. There we go. He's got a full complement of ship in his ships in his launch bays now, or the ones that he's uh, built so far. And no, ready to I'm go just again. dying to know what this event's going to be. Let's see. Oh, it's Call of the Obelisk. Obelisk, Obelisk, Obelisk. 
Supremacy. That Supremacy. is devastating to Luke. That is just that, devastating to Luke. So again, Maximus is two points ahead on Supremacy. That's the middle red track, if I'm not, not mistaken. Um, that is, yeah. That's just, that is just not what Luke was hoping for. Clearly, he was hoping for the Civilization track, the blue track, to be scored. Yeah. And look, look at that. The Flying the source, Saucer. The Saucerian Abductor. We only have two left. I have one here. And one here. I've got to say, I think the, uh, you know, look at these minis. I know it's, you know, not the final production version, but they're really enhancing and, uh, and adding to the gameplay experience, aren't they, as well? I think they're looking cracking. You know, I just wish that those player boards had some nice LED lights, you know, this little undercarriage. You know, maybe you could change the dial and change the color of light that would be glowing under there. I just think <laughs> that that would be the kind of deluxification that Peter Vaughn is known for. Maybe, you know, make some monster noises. Oh, no, wrong game, wrong game. But, yeah. I get hosed on that one, because I don't have any leaders left. I just get a tactics card. Oh, and again, the event hurts Luke even more because he didn't have the leaders out on the board to claim. And really, th this could be the turning point. I think if Maximus pulls this out, I think this might be why. We're pretty close to the end. He's just got this longer game plan. I'm liking Maximus, as, as I mentioned before, use of the tactics deck that's giving him so many more options when it comes to his turns and when it comes to Luke's turns because some of those tactics kind of interrupt as well don't they the other players tactics if you're not doing that then you know you kind of you're not really optimizing what you can do well and you know and, and I was talking about being concerned that Max was was running out so fast but you know they're playing they are playing the short game of only 50 points for the end game trigger points. yeah and so that that might be that, that might be the mistake that I was making as I was viewing, because I was feeling like Luke might have this in the bag, but now I'm just not so sure. If they were playing 60 or 70, I'd feel more confident for Luke, but he may have waited too long to make his move. Done yet. I take a leader, um, and now I move up the event track, and then I'll take the whole action here. Um, Luke, it looks like he's on 42, and oh, 48 32. for Maximus. Oh, and there so we that, go. Yeah. Oh, and so that that and so and Maximus is getting the damaged the commerce module, knowing that he has time to fix it before the next event. That's really smart timing. That you don't want to get those uh, damaged modules right before the event happens because you lose points uh, for any damaged modules. You up oh, and there we go, discarding another so diplomacy tactics card. Right? He's discarding. Oh, tactics no, he's, discard card, he's using yeah. it as a resource to get a second commerce module. And he's trying. He's trying to get up to the spot that makes all of his extra resources worth points at the end. That has to be what he's playing. So he's he's got kind of a three three things happening here. He's going up on the science track and trying to build those uh, those observatories. Um, he's got the wonderful use of the tactics cards, and now he's looking to score more for his resources. So we should start to see Maximus maximize those resources for the uh, as we get to this kind of the latter stage of the game. You know, I see, I see what you did there. I see what you did there, and, uh, yeah, I, and I'm yeah. here for it. <laughs> Because let's also remember, if he gets that vault bonus, all those tactic cards that he's been building up, they will also count as one point each. Which is just utterly smart. All right, and so he's starting another fight. It's been a while. And, of course, Maximus has targeting. He has to reroll ones and twos. But he's yeah. in a hole right now. And he... Oh, no, wait, he has he, one more roll, but I don't think yeah. it's going to matter. He's just, no, oh, he still gets to roll again? Five or six. Uh, oh, that just oh. did it. Here we go. He got a six. And that's the targeting down. So that allowed him to re-roll those, re those lower numbered dice, the ones and the twos there. He got, uh, a, and he got his six that he needed. And, and I, if I remember correctly, he might get to go up the commerce module again. I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Yep. He yep. got the there vault. There we go. What oh, a There play. we go. <laughs> And a supremacy boost as well. No wonder Luke has kind of rubbed all his hair away. If he's continually playing against Maximus, then, you know, I would be rubbing my hair away as well. Yeah, you know, he, if he continues to, to get uh, schooled like this, he's going to have hairlines like you and I. He better, he should put on his bike helmet or something. Got to protect that, because that was a play if I've ever seen one. That was a fantastic play by young Maximus there. Maximus Aurelius is just kind of, uh, yeah. 
leading the field. I did not like that you got that. So um, Luke is now visibly rattled by all of this as well. I thought, you know, I think we moved away from the sledging and the kind of uh, the gamesmanship into Luke being genuinely worried about his position now. He's got to think about how do I slow my ascent to 50 points because he needs at least another another two or three turns. If he races towards that 50 points, it's going to be game over for him. Uh, it gets the end, it triggered the end of the oh, game. Oh, and I, he is picking a oh. fight. And let's not remember, we are only two away from triggering that next event. So the, the writing may be on the space wall. So Maximus could escalate here. Is he going to escalate? He's only got the one ship there. I, I, yeah. But I think he has a lot of energy. Yeah. No, he has no energy right no. now. Yeah. No. And he's done the right thing there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. My death claw will be a tableau death claw. Okay. Instead of a combat death claw. All right. You can disgrace your, your kind as much as you like. Oh, what? <laughs> that is not. That oh. is a play that, you know, we oh. don't like to see something like that. Talking about disgrace, that is just a low blow from the, that's, from the veteran. That's classic gaslighting going on right there. But I tell you, it may have worked. It may have gotten in young Maximus's head. We're just, we'll just have to wait and see. Bonus weapons so he's, uh, Luke's talking of how many dice he gets here. Uh, so he's got quite a few dice to roll here against... Energy. So I'm going to roll maximum dice. Oh, he's going to roll maximum dice. He's going to roll all six of his dice against, is it four? Yeah, the saucer, the saucerians get four. Um, no special abilities. Six. Luke should go for it here. This is a big roll for him. He needs this win. They got a five, four. No targeting? Oh. I got oh, no look fives. At the devastation. Oh. Look at the devastation. Oh. I have nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know, if you play with the bulls, you've got to be prepared to get kind of hit by the horns there, and that's exactly what's happened to Luke there. Yep. A terrible, played the bull. terrible... <laughs> played with the bull. <laughs> terrible roll. Uh, you know, it, to be honest, he did exactly the right thing. He had everything going for him there. I think it's just the way that this game has gone for Luke. Some bad decisions, some awful gamesmanship, some terrible gaslighting. This is karma. This is kismet. This is coming to bite him back in the ass. Yeah, you know, I just, I, I have to say, it, it just, I mean, if he, you know, there's no shame if Luke throws in the towel after that. That that was just devastating. We'll, we'll see if he can come back to it. Come back uh, around. The smile. Does he have anything we, in the tank? Oh, that's there. Could he have been setting all of us up? Uh, no. For each damaged module I have, which is... Maybe I shouldn't have answered that so quickly. I'll think about that. No. Repair action. I repair... My module, this tactics is discarded. Uh, I'm going to do a launch with the eight. It really seems like Maximus needs to, oh, look at that, a free jump he's going to get anywhere he wants. It seems like Maximus really needs to push this in game. I did. And you played it twice in this. I'd still be okay. I think if I was Maximus, I'd let Luke rush to the 50 points because at this point, I think as we get to end game scoring, the longer it takes, the more he's just going to embarrass his dad. Nice. Titanium. But you know, you have you have to think, you have to think that that inside Luke is really proud. If he gets taken down by Maximus, that is such a sign of the, of how just how far he's come, since since those days of being grounded back in 2012. Absolutely, absolutely. I think this is you know the start of a very. And look at that another. Another monolith. Look how look at the distance on the supremacy track between them. Yeah, the obelisks are moving up there. I think you know he's going to get extra points for scoring now. If he's on, it might be on level two now. There for obelisks, they still got more to go on that on the science track to try and get his observatories to work for him better. And look at um, that, he's playing that discovery for two tactics cards. He's been holding that for a while. So good, so good. The diplomacy card uh, power. Yeah. And look at that. He's throwing away a diplomacy That's card it. to get two, two more. more. This is powerful. This is powerful, powerful stuff. And then I will play harmful nanites. Perform one repair. Oh. That's wow. the that's the mid game mid game glass of whiskey for Luke there. I think you know he's he, he tastes of uh, Scottish Highlands and defeat. You designed this card, right? Oh look at that! Look at the confidence! <laughs> what what a shot! Not even across Luke's oh. bow. That was that was a broadside. Oh, that was absolutely a stellar stellar move. Played against Luke, brilliant. 
You are done, huh? We aren't afraid of ion storms. We send our transport and we fly it okay, straight so into the ion storm. Uh, to the ion storm. Uh, it's okay unless it attacks, unless it uh, unless it strikes. Uh, well, because okay re remember, you're going the ion storm, it damages everything. Yeah, only if it strikes, I believe. Yeah. I'm six points away from triggering the end of the game. Oh, six points away from triggering the end of the game, Luke. I'd be thinking about putting those brakes on now. I'd give yourself a bit of breathing space. A heavy cruiser in, and we are going to be blasting the ion storm. So he's going to blast the ion storm. Okay, they're going to attack the so, ion I mean, storm. Now, is this the, the equivalent of an old man shouting at the wind? Who knows? Who knows? I will pass on escalation. Okay. And look at that. Maximus knows you don't go shout at a storm. Yeah, he's got five dice and a targeting of two, so unless his roll goes like it was before, then hopefully Luke has some chance here. Um, oh, look at that. He's playing no cards, using no energy. Five dice. Targeting of two, five dice against four dice of the Iron Star Storm. What a roll from Luke. Devilishly good. Three sixes. That's fantastic. Damaged. Not destroyed. And that allows me to go up the supremacy track, which gives me a two victory point bonus. And it allows me to go up the science track, because that's what you get when you... Uh, he's equal now on the science track for Maximus. Which, uh, yeah, which isn't going to help him too much at the end. No, he's oh, got... No. Has he, uh, has you know, he's, Luke there? just said he thinks he's done, and he may be right more ways <laughs> than one. <laughs> I think he may well have been done before this oh, game Oh, he just started. played a black market. I play the black market, and I'm going to get a card by spending two ice. I will acquire the Customs Office module, which is a civilization module. Okay. He's running up the civilization track. So okay. I'm not sure what Customs does. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Before wait a the minute. modules are refreshed, I'm going to play Heist. Play after an opponent gains a module before refreshing. At no cost, choose and gain one module of the same type. Uh, and look at that. He gets a take on all He goes over there. Fantastic. Great move. Really, really smart move. Effective use of holding back those tactic cards, knowing when to play them. This comes back to what I said earlier on in the game. Having that cycling through that hand of tactics cards and having a good, strong ability to get them is game-changing for Maximus here because Luke has not found a way to counter that strategy. Yeah, but but Luke did just get to draw all the way up to his new hand size of six. I don't know that it's going to be able to do enough at this point. Well, he's not really using them, is he? That's the issue with them, with his tactics cards. You know, you can count them uh, uh, on, on, on the fingers of one hand how many times he's used his tactics cards. And it doesn't matter how big your hands are, it's still, you know, a number of fingers. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's just struggling to use those tactics cards to any advantage. Oh, and look at that. Maximus is going to the nebula. He wants to see what it is. And he's, he's, we have to assume he's hoping for a supremacy track. You'd think so. You'd think so. Um, and you could go there because your science vessel is range two. Yeah. And you had to move within two of your... From there. So fire. now I'll go ahead and pick which event I would like on top. That's probably going to be the last event. I'm going to, I'm going to get to 50 here real quick. Again, it's a smart move if you can get to do that. Um... Oh, and uh, we, we, we can hear what Bambi in the background thinks about this play. Very absolutely. big fan. Have yeah, to assume very, she's pulling for Maximus right now. Absolutely cheering Maximus on 100% now. At the moment, I'm going to discard that moon. He's going to discard the moon, what was on the moon, to get a point, a victory point, and a tactics card again. This is such an effective strategy. He knows what he's doing right now. He's given so many options in the game itself. And he's also playing Black Market. And bumps up the event track. So, so not he... only did he decide what the event was, he's now made it happen, which is fantastic. Another new region now coming out of the card. that is an amazing play. That's really, really, really smart. In control of the game there. And just, and just it seems like from start to finish, but there's still a couple turns left. Nah, I think, you know, you've got... Or I'm going to spend this two credit token... Um, so I have one but credit. but look 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 at the focus on Luke's face. Look at the focus there. He's he is looking for a way to turn this into something, and you can't you can't count out a master like Luke Laurie. You just can't count it out. Just like Tom Brady at the end of a game, you can't count him out. 
can't count Luke out. And for our British audience, who's Tom Brady? Oh, he's like he's like whoever your best cricketer is. <laughs> I wouldn't know that as well. Okay, he's playing strategic shift. What does this allow him to do? Well, that's let's do draw more cards, right? I guess to draw more cards. <laughs> It's all, it's almost just insulting now. It's, it's, he's toying with him. He's like a cat oh, with oh, a mouth. Oh, he's doing, he's doing a take back see. He's doing a take back. Uh, that, oh, no. He's oh, going to power play oh. of that I take back see. advance on a different track. Okay. Science. And yes, smart move. Move further up on that science track. Maximize those end game points for your observatories. This is a really good move. And I'm playing strategic shift. To... Luke is literally just there now to... And put wow, three more cards. cards away. He 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 has to be farming for diplomacy cards right now. Oh, that's all you think, yeah? Four cards. There we go. There it is. The magic card. I just feel like a dealer over here. Right now. <laughs> yeah, Luke's just said I feel like a dealer. Absolutely, that's literally. I all mean, you if are. Maximus keeps playing like this, then he might have to be his new job. <laughs> Claim one moon token from the discard pile. Let's and just. And he's just getting more and more and more. So out, out of the discard pile of the moons, Maximum now gets to have a, uh, a second dip into there. Let's see what's in there. Mm. How about this one for Tactics and VP? And another Tactics card. And a VP. And, VP. and he has just, I believe, tied Luke on the board. Yep, there it is. Mm. And we still have the event to go as well after after this turn, don't we? As well, so yeah. Unless it is the civilization track, I just don't see how Luke catches up here. And of course, since Maximus got to pick, there's no way he picked this civilization track. But even if it is the civilization track, it's only two points additional for Luke. Um, and I don't think it's going to matter end of game when you look at that difference where uh, Maximus is on the other civilization tracks. Uh, sorry, on the other tracks. I just don't think it's going to make that much difference. And look at that. And another point. Okay. And now we can go to the event. And now the event. Let's see what we have. The event is Lunar Rush. And look oh, at that. Lunar Rush. Supremacy. You are much Which better. scores Supremacy. And, and for those of you who don't know, this is actually a cross-promotion with Dead Alive Games and their game Lunar Rush. And so I'm very happy to see that myself. Ooh, and Luke had some damage. Uh, S is the Swarming Raiders, which is the Strikers, and two of them come out. More Strikers come out. Not that I think it's going to matter too much. At this point, it doesn't really matter too much. I think, you know... Um, there may be some combat, but you know, there's still a, a bit more building could take place there. I think Maximus needs to bring out at least one more observatory to really cement the win on this. From the discard pile. And just concentrate on moving up that science track if he can. That would be really good. Uh, <laughs> yep, and I... Well, he has... I, I think he has some credit, so he, he, he might... Maximus might be able to go up that track one more time. Good for me right now, yes, because damaged modules count against you at the end of the game. So, yeah, I guess I am going to scoop that up. I don't know. I thought it, maybe I got real lucky on a cool tactics card, but I've got a decent hand here. We'll see what I can make out of it. And then it's your final turn, right? Okay, final countdown. I have a couple of very good moves that will probably not win me the game. Look at that. L L L Luke is accepting it. He says he has a couple good moves. That's probably not going to win him the game. And then after I go, you get a final turn because we pass 50. There are going to be no more events. We're done with events. And let's see what happens. So my science vessel with a range of two uh, swoops over to the development office to build an obelisk going to build. right going to underneath build. this nah. ion storm. One more obelisk under the storm. Don't work there. Do not work for the Dark Star Acolytes. They will literally send you into an ion storm. And I don't know if that's the right move. I mean, that's Luke looking for his own points. I would be going for mitigation here and try to reduce Maximus's potential points with potentially trying to build the last observatory. I mean, it, it, it's an interesting play to build the obelisk there. 
Yeah. Because Luke is not high up on that track. No. I'm going to score decently here because there's a lot of leaders. There's no more events to come out, so there's there's no event scoring on there. Three, four, five leaders. And it puts me to 56. Uh, It's it's okay for leaders. So that's it. He's gone over the 50 points. He's triggered the end of the game now because they've set it at 50 points. Um, There you go. He's moved up on the supremacy track. Um, Again, just feels like a a suboptimal move. Feels like a suboptimal game for Luke in fact you know we should call him suboptimal Laurie I think for moving on uh, moving on from now you know I, I, I you know I, I have to think that that maybe somewhere in the in the in Luke's deep subconscious he is very happy for Maximus to to take the throne from him I think you know in Luke's kind of subconscious he's very happy he's made made it through an hour without falling asleep as well well i have to say i'm happy that i've made it through enough uh, without falling asleep you know it because at our age it is hard yeah yeah and you know and and i didn't take go down the path that you did of wearing the diaper so you know this is this is challenging i saved so many trips to the toilet battle breaks out escalation my heavy cruiser jumps into the battle i spend an energy we still Desperately. Now, Luke rescue. could have a tactics card where if he wins this, he Maximus? could tie Maximus on the supremacy track. So that that is a, that could be a good mitigation play there. I don't think it'll be enough, but he did build another obelisk, so that could be something. You look on the commerce track, he's three, put three spaces behind him on the commerce track. That's going to hurt him terribly. I'm going to actually slot my repair token in my tactical operations. So even if I... So interesting. So even if he loses, he'll be able to claim two points. Yeah. Don't lose. I can't repair that one. Never mind that. I'm going to go ahead and ditch my repair token and repair this preemptively. And I'm going to accept whatever happens to my ships. Okay. I'm fighting against the... He's going for, I think, a bit of a wild gambit here. He's going back to the uh, Sorcerian Abductor. For my science vessel, I have three weapons for my heavy cruiser, plus my energy from uh, diverting it. That's what happened uh, last time he did max size against the Sorcerian Cruiser. It didn't work out in his favor. Bad roll. Six, four, three. I genuinely hope it happens happens for him this time. I win. There we go. It has. There we go. There we go. You get the saucer. Now let's see if he has that tactics card. You get to rescue one of yours, or I kindly help rescue one of yours. Leaders. The other one stays on the ship as it vanishes off over the galactic horizon, but there always is a chance that they can come back in games, but not this one. The what? The what? What a devastation! L- Luke just saw one of Maximus's good school friends on that saucer and left them there. Devastating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will still come to you to try and teach the young people a lesson. Points also. So I'm pretty happy with that outcome. Well, you know, it's that it's that old lesson, you know. L- l- life is hard and then you die. Yeah. I'm going to discard a diplomacy card. Okay, final turn. He's got, of course he's discarding a diplomacy card. Luke did not have that tactics card to go up twice on the supremacy no. track. Uh, I'm going to make a stealth maneuver. With a tactics card. This is already starting off very well for Maximus. Got an extra tactics, the extra tactics cards. Doing a stealth move. Put the transport. And I'm returning to station. Okay, pulling him back. Figure out exactly how to do it. So and there we go. First and foremost, Maximus I need taken two the cards. Time to actually work out what he wants to do. Right. Luke has been jumping in a little bit, kind of. I'd say ham-fisted, but it's more like poor-fisted uh, in, in, into these situations, not really thinking them through. Maximus is taking the time, working them out in advance, playing chess against somebody playing tic tac and, and just look at the size of that tableau there. That tableau is fantastic. Yep. Three rows. So going here wouldn't... And, and, and look, and so we remember that he was moving so up that commerce track energy for energy the vault bonus, but if you notice down there at the bottom, he's also going to get a, another bonus of in-game like scoring for commerce, commerce track as well. Modules. What a move. Absolutely, yeah. Pretty much, so... Could do that. And then I'm going to play Unwelcome Visitor and use one of your modules. In look some at way. that. What? Just rubbing it in. Play more tactics cards now, play on Welcome Visitor. 
Stay out of my modules. Now, I have to say, Maximus better be careful there, because he does not want Luke to say he's an unwelcome visitor when they get back home. So he better be well, careful right here. He's going to use unwelcome visitor to give commerce, commerce track boost. Wow. And a resource such as this thing. That, what a play. He's spending a resource to go up that commerce track, and that's going to double dip for him. And... He's not going to get to the next vault bonus, but what a no. play there. So that's still, what, two points per um, per resource at the end? Is that right? Uh, yeah, right now it looks like he's at just one point per resource, one point I think. One point per resource, okay. To gain one. Uh, oh, he's moving up that science track. Oh, and he's going to get to go. to take token. another token. Yes. And so he's probably looking for a Such track animals. boost right now. Yep. Hmm. Such as a science module. Um, science module. Oh, which will science be module. Boost. Uh, another boost up that uh, up that track. This is this is masterful. I'll spend that. It's truly masterful. I'll take an undamaged science module. So which one's he gonna do? He's. Uh, I don't that. think it matters. He's just looking for one that's not okay, damaged. That advances you on yeah, the science yeah. track again. On the science. And He's then. Still not finished his turn. There's still plenty to go. You don't have any energy. How are you going to run any of the rest of those modules? I, well, I have one energy. You do? Come do you have an energy. obelisk that Time you haven't loop. tapped? Oh, yes. Oh, oh you do. The key to oh, and you know what? What, what? what a good play. Good yeah. gamesmanship there by Luke, reminding him that he has four more energy to run all of those different I modules. Energy on uh, the Intergalactic Embassy. I'll discard a card. For a science track boost. So, uh, moving again up the and science track boost. This is just... This is, this and I, is and I believe he has two science buildings there as well. Just having it sit there. I spend one of these energies here on the treasury to take a credit. Treasury to take oh, a credit. What's he going to use that credit for? Um, nice job. Spend an is energy he gonna build? here to get a carbon. And spend an energy here to develop. So carbon. Yeah, he's going to develop. And a credit will get me those resources. I have a leader here. I build the last observatory. Yes, yes. That scores yes. two. <laughs> smart move. They keep not scoring very, a lot very on their smart own. Move. Two, two points. points. I bump to the end of that track. This is, this and is painful. And he made it all the way to the end of the track. That's, this is painful for Luke. This has to be kind of a bittersweet for Luke. Let's put it that way, yeah? You know, he's, uh, you know, he's uh, kind of created the game. Created the boy, uh, both the game and the boy have beaten him. Yeah, well and truly beaten him. I tell you, just, uh, uh, I mean, th th this is the type of defeat that sends you into retirement. Let let's hope that Luke doesn't go down that path here. Yeah, yeah, I think he's still got a good maybe one or two more years in him. So, not quite ready yet to be put out to pasture. And then I discard this for a card. And I discard and this, this for turn a is just still energy. going. It's so still going. This is a wonderful to turn. And, moons, since and again, it shows the beauty of the game. You build up your tableau, you build up your powers, you use everything effectively. You can crescendo into this fantastic, fantastic... There we go. Finished it. And, and, what and a look, just look, look, look end at Luke. Luke, Luke is just amazed at it's, what's happening He's amazed. Right I'm amazed at that. That was a wonderful, wonderful play. That final turn was enormous. Even Luke's conceding that it was just like en an enormous turn. That was amazing, an amazing turn. So let's have a look at this final scoring. It's not going to go, although Luke's in, in the lead, it's not going to go Luke's way. Desperation. Instead, you cleverly pulled off like one of the biggest builds and end games I've ever seen. Impressive. Well, yeah. thank you. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so tracks. Let's score these tracks. You got 20 on science. Uh, you got 10 30, on industry, 57. 10 on supremacy, 10 on commerce, and 9 on civilization. That is 59 points by my so math. 117? 119. Right? 20, a seven. 10, 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I looked at mine right here. Yep. yep. So. 117. That's here. All right. 17 plus 8 is 25. 31, 40. I get 40 points total by my track positions. You way out tracked me. I'm only at 98. Can you put mine on 98? But I say 39. Uh, let's see. I saw 15, 23, uh, 31, 40. Oh, okay. 
then um, now we score developments and they score based on how high you got. Your observatories are all 10 pointers and your obelisk is worth seven. So you got 37 points there. My obelisk is only worth five. My two obelisks are worth five and my city is worth five. Mine are only worth 15 points because no, I didn't get as double, high on the tracks. Double. So I go to... This is, this is one of the highest scoring games I've seen of this. Wow. And okay. then damage on modules, zero for both of us. Zero for me, yep. Leaders on station, I, I have, have four. four. So that's not a deciding factor here. And then vault bonus. Oh boy. Um, the vault bonus is for a position on commerce track and you get one point for each of your resources. I didn't get high enough on the commerce track. I don't get any points he for He is my still resources. counting. Eight points. Yeah. Only eight points. And then civilization modules. And I do have a civilization module. It only scores me three points. It would have scored me three points for each uh, factory I had, but I didn't have any factories. And you had one that scored for commerce modules? Two points for each commerce module, so that's six points. My final score is 120. Your final score is 173. Three. Wow. Wow. What very good game. Impressive. What a victory. What a victory. What an absolute, absolute victory. I think what you got there is just like, you know, one of the best games of Andro two play games of Andromeda's Age that you're going to see. Uh, absolutely right. The Warmongers absolutely crushed the Acolytes. Uh, I think, you know, if you're looking to play this game, you want to study Maximus's strategy. If you want to play the big game badly, you need to study Luke's strategy. Yeah, he just, he, he ran out and he just, uh, you know, they say it's a, marathon not a sprint but maximus just sprinted through that whole marathon you know we, we we gave luke a bit of a hard time here but uh he did not play a bad game he just no. got out played with the very clever tactics card play and that that one devastating defeat i think really set luke back several turns yeah that one yeah. bad dice roll that bad dice roll did not help Luke in any way, shape, or form. 120 points is a respectable score. Uh, 173 points is an absolutely fantastic score from you, Maximus. There. Yes, I, I am not embarrassed to say that I have um, I've scored 120 points like once. So that is a very, very strong score. <laughs> yeah, I think I scored 153 on my last game. Um, but yeah, that was that was fantastic. That was great fun. And so, Mark, why, why, why don't you, you t take us out? Tell everybody what it is that they need to know. What do they need to do if they want to get a copy of this game? Of course, it's already live right now, but let them know what's going on. So what you need to do is go and check out the Andromeda's Edge campaign on GameFound. It's obviously designed by Luke Laurie and Maximus Laurie, both of them you saw playing there. You can see it's got this wonderful meshing of all sorts of mechanisms. It's resource management. It's a little bit of combat. It's not full combat in there. There's some card play. There's hand management. There's lots of wonderful things that you can do with this game. And trust me, it becomes this really start of intricate and wonderful puzzle as you're kind of playing through it. Uh, so many different factions, so many different strategies to adopt through this game. And of course, it plays solo as well. So go and check out Game Found. Look for Andromeda's Edge on Game Found now. Go and pledge for it because if you've enjoyed this, you're going to want to play more Andromeda's Edge. I've played it a number of times myself now. Will has played it a number of times. Every game is markedly different. It's just such an utter joy to play. Yep. And so uh, everybody, those of you that stuck around for our blather are very, very uh, intellectual and expert blather, really, especially as we talk about the challenges of being an old man, which we, we, we are very much understanding. And we, we appreciate Luke for t taking our jibes there, but let's not take away from a fantastic play by both of them and uh congratulations to maximus for just devastation and i hope Crushing. it did not result in I, I hope it didn't result in another grounding well you know if he does I, i'd take that one on the chin quite frankly if i was him i'd sit there in my bedroom all day with a smug smile on my face knowing that i just played the best game of andromeda's edge anybody's ever played yeah you know and just think for you for for years now he's gonna be able to say hey dad Remember that time we, we played Andromeda's Edge on, on video? What was the score of that game? 
<laughs> so yeah so obviously we want to thank um uh luke and maximus we also want to thank thank peter vaughan from cardboard alchemy for setting this up it's been a joy to see this for both of us to see this uh the, the this game go through the various stages of development and and this has been an utter joy will thank you to you as well for joining me on this video you know um i think i think i could do another one one day with you i think maybe yeah We'll see about that. All yeah. right, everybody. But... <laughs> Get in the friend zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, we'll see what happens at Powdered Wig Con too, all right? <laughs> um, so everybody, make sure that you go check out Not Bored Gaming and Hungry Gamer. And if you haven't subscribed to the Cardboard Alchemy channel, well, you probably have because that, that's where you're watching this video. But make sure you do all of those things. Go check out... Go check out the campaign. Go check out the rest of what Cardboard Alchemy has to offer. And as I always say on my channel, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye, everybody.